Hi and uh, welcome to Watchdog War Gaming. Um, well, I've done. I've um, finished off painting off my Royal Marines for Korea. Uh, they've been sprayed with some uh, matte sealant, clear sealant. Um, some of them were a little bit shiny, but that's that's by the by. So uh, time to um, to base them. So it's uh, got so all the old glues and everything else and PVA all ready to go. Some of it I've already started and um, I'm using this one called um, Field Scatter. I can't remember the word uh, manufacturer is, but I think I bought it off uh, on eBay. Um, and um, it's not bad. Um, I'm not sure, as I said, it's, I don't know if I've overdone it or but um, it seems okay at the moment. So uh, I'll just walk through, talk through what I've been doing. So get one of my figures. As you can see, it's, yeah, it's off the figure there. Yeah, let's get a little bit nearer. Well, so all I'm going to do is just a little bit of PVA on the bottom of the figures. Try not to get it all over the uniform and uh, the boots and everything else. So this is the first time I've used this uh, this particular one. So it comes pre pre packed with all different lots of different materials in it. Yeah, it's personal preference what you want. So all I've done get the uh, get the box, the old Chinese box full of the material in it. Make sure it's got a good covering on it, and then. Give it a tap, give it a blow, and then that should should be based up um, okay. Oh, someone's got the sneezes in the next room. Yeah, so I've got field scatter. And I've got some desert scatter as well, and also I've picked up one called urban scatter as well. So again, this is nice, nice different. Uh, so that one, so if, if I do my eighth army, I might do it on that one. And then urban, if I'm doing some of my um, sci-fi ones, might use it on urban. And uh, I seem to have got oodles of grass or tree flock as well. And then just to mix it up, I've got these uh, tufts. Again, so sometimes it's uh, super glued with these down as well, not not PVA. So, um, in fact, let's let's do something different. So this one here, get some of this super glue. Just super glue it at the back, so it's a bit more permanent than the PVA. Someone's had the lid set off a bit too long. There we are. Just a tad. And now yeah, we'll go for one of these. So let's just pull it off. And as you can see what I'm doing, just pull it off there, that strip. And then a pair of tweezers. Just push it down nice and tightly. I use a tweezer so I don't get uh, super glue on my fingers. Nothing worse than super glue in your fingers together. So there we are. So what I'll do is now just put a little bit of PVA on there as well. Nice and tidy. Trying not to get over his boots and trousers. This is a, a sacrificial, sacrificial brush that I've had for, for some time that uh, uh, has gone past its sell by date for actual painting, but it's good enough for putting PVA glue down and, uh, and basing. Yeah. So a little bit of a tuft, and then on there. Back in, 
Give it a tap. Give it a blow. There we are. That'll, uh, that'll do for me. I did think it was perhaps it was a bit too much, but um, with lots of rocks in it and just a little bit of grass and everything else. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. And so let's see how it goes. Um, as you can see, this is all my um, British Marines now. So four one commander that went over to Korea. They were armed with U.S. weapons and wore U.S. uniforms. The only thing that they kept of, which was Royal Marines, was their berries. Some had some boots as well, so that's what I'm trying to do here. So I've got um, um, <laughs> sort of, um, a company there. That's uh, section oh, sorry, company command section commander. He's armed with a Thompson, and then we've got a bar light machine gun, and all the rest of. Uh, rifles, various ones, either uh, Garand and I think there's an M1 carbine on there, so it's same for this one and same for that one. So I've got three rifle companies. Um, the company commander, or whatever, the NCO, is, is the armed with the uh, submachine gun. Um, this one is a slight conversion, so like you see, he's actually armed with a um, Russian submachine gun. And then, so sort of, I've got, um, and then it's just a small section with um, SMGs. Probably use those for assault. Lieutenant, and plus one, or Lieutenant plus Senior NCO, light, uh, light mortar. Then I've got the um, OP plus one, sniper plus observer, and then the, the medic himself. And then over here, I've got. Um, Medium mortar, uh, bazooka team, um, MMG team, and then so for light artillery, I'm actually using a recoilless rifle. I'm not sure which one that is actually. I think that might be the later one, which is more Vietnam era, but it's still a recoilless rifle, you know. That's what I'm using it for. And then uh, when I get this chappy painted up, that's going to be their transport. Yeah, it's in 143rd scale, so it's a little bit bigger than your normal 156. Just, just to prove a point, there's a 143rd scale uh, Jeep, which fits inside nicely. And also room for troops as well, so uh, I'll get that painted up. And uh, that's going to be their um, transport. So this is more or less what I'm doing at the moment. Um, got um, gearing up for um, it's a Vietnam Kickstarter on the moment that's uh, I've uh, signed up for so that's uh, the, some of the figures in there that might be used for um, Indochina and, uh, and then also Vietnam as well so I, pr print, I did print off one of their um, samples yesterday just how it was um, and normally they're, they're like short and stocky but I've just changed the um, I think it was the X and Y on it, so it's it's it actually mirrors my bolt action figures. So this is just a GI with a M16, got grenades, and um, I'll print them off just to see what is it's, see what they look they're like. I had a quick look at some of the books I've got. Whilst the the web and everything else looks the part is not actually 100% um, accurate. Um, but I think once from the table, I think they're all painted up there, that would be that'd nice. Been meaning to do uh, Vietnam for a long time. Used to play it years and years ago using um, a Peter Pig figures. And I think it was um, Company B rules. But um, I'm, I'm See what's out there at the moment. I got a few rules. The uh, was it Nam? I got Force on Force, and I've, and I've got a, a, an old one from years and years and years ago. That I I um I forgot I had. And it's called Buckle for Your Dust Miniature War Games in Vietnam by Greg McCall. So I haven't um, priced in the UK six pounds fifty. Uh, miniature war game set in Vietnam, um, yeah, and it also it actually has um, 
in fact, other rule sets in there as well. So it's got one for, what was it, one cell, one brain cell wargaming and also, um, uh, brown water navy as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what that is, but buckle for your dust as well. But, well, this is what I'm doing at the moment. So I'm just going to carry on doing that. You can more than welcome to uh, join me. Just uh, sit back and relax while I do all this. Or um, I'll catch you up soon. Um, I've been away for um, a week. So I've went to uh, Cyprus, never been there. Um, was actually going to go there as a military posting. But um, asked for one island and got another island. Uh, not, which was not so sunny. But, um, it was uh, well worth a break. I needed the break, and so did the good lady. So back in the UK now, and uh, back into uh, liquid sunshine. <laughs> it was great to see uh, my lads again. Two legged and the four legged kind. Um, yeah, so hopefully uh, you all have a break as well at some point this year, unless you've already been away. Yeah, won't be going to salute again this year, unfortunately, so I've been double booked, but. Um, The wife has booked us a weekend away somewhere with uh, some um, some friends, so um, she called uh, dibs on that. So uh, unfortunately, uh, I won't be able to go. Probably I think that's the first one I haven't attended, less the ones that cancelled over COVID. But undecided whether this, um, this base material is a bit too much or perhaps it'll calm down after a while. I've left it grey and marks on there as well so because it's all going to get hidden by all this base material. So, what I might do on the next one is put some uh, some green bushes down there as well just to break it. So I don't know how people oh, just a bit there. So it'll be interesting to see what people's preferences for, for basing how they how they do it. Do they just do it painted and highlighted or do they use some basing material or flock or anything like that? So um, yeah, just put your comments below and uh, just to see what you what you do. Uh, okay, right, we might have to squeeze this a little bit more. Let's get that. Okay, I didn't, knew that was going to happen. But let's see if we can salvage something. I could use a bigger, bigger one on this, and try and push that some of that super glue back onto the. Uh... Oh, this is going to be a big bush. For now, for now. Met a lot of, quite a lot of people from uh, USA that were on cruises that pulled into one of the ports I happened to be um, in at the time. Um, Pensacola, I think that's in that's Florida, isn't it? Got some friends of mine who were out in the states. One was a. Uh, One was in the army with me, also in military police, and I believe he married a uh, 
American military police, female military police lady, and uh, they're living out in the States at the moment. I think they're um, rebuilding a They're rebuilding uh, an American Civil War time period uh, water mill and, and uh, turning it into a community area and working museum type of one. So uh, they do updates every now and again. It's quite interesting to see how they're getting on. Um, I need to ask him if he's found any. Um, Civil War relics whilst he's been doing his refurbishments. Yep, Simon. That was one of my hobbies a long time ago. I did the um, American Civil War reenacting, uh, 55th Virginia, for those who are interested. A three band Enfield musket that uh, I held on a shotgun license and uh, was allowed to fire uh, black powder. It was uh, interesting to do, learn all the drills and that as well. And all my accoutrements I had, all my, I've all the, so either sold on or given away or whatever. So uh, I think the only thing I've got left is my. Um, is my uh, belt buckle, my uh, Confederates CS1. Still got that somewhere. And then I went on to do World War II reenacting. So um, that was interesting. Collected all the uh, 38 pattern webbing started off as a basic infantier and then uh, start the old knees started playing up so I couldn't start running around the field and doing uh, chat section attacks so uh, I uh, became an officer so I can uh, lead from the rear uh, but we had a sort of um, call ourselves the echelon so uh, that was more Rear end admin, but we, but we had this display where we had all the kit and equipment, all the weapons and everything else. That's why I still got my, I uh, still got a Sten gun, um, the Enfield number four rifle. I got a P15, um, and I got a um, an SMLE um, short magazine in the Enfield, which I actually built. So um, you know and. Mate of mine, Eddie, did the, some of the uh, did the carpentry work, so it's uh, all my woodwork's all matching. That one I built over, uh, I think the um, the actual metal work, the receiver, the bolt, and everything else is um, that's again deactivated. Uh, it was all 1938, and and then the rest of it is. All stuff that I've collected from around the world, bits and bobs, or spares parts for it. The actual site, the actual site on it, um, I found on a battlefield tour of France when I was a kid. And I'll have to show you sometime. It's actually, I don't know, I can't remember which battlefield it came from, but the actual sites are rusted solid. At 200 meters, not 200 meters, 200, yeah, 200, 
That'd be meters and feet. Well, it's like a 200. So whoever fired it last, well, that's what they uh, set their uh, their sights on. Let me f 200 yards. That'd be 200 yards. Yeah, and it's um, sat in a cupboard in my parents' house for a long, long time, and then I put it in a coffee jar covered in rifle oil for some years, and uh, I managed to uh, preserve it, and now it's fit into that rifle. So it's a, little, it's a bit of a, a bit of a bit, sir. Works well for demonstrations. Right. Yeah, so what I'm doing is Royal Marines um, from 4 1 Commando, um, independent commando that was uh, deployed to, to Korea. Uh, they used a lot of raiding. Um, up and down uh, the North Korea, they were working off um, both ships and submarines, blowing up uh, railways and uh, breaking communications and everything else. So they've used well, from what you read, I don't, I don't think they were used to their full potential. And then, so if, uh, they were. Once that raiding stopped, they were. I think it was their commanding officer, basically went to the uh, Admiralty and, uh, and also the uh, U.S. Marine Corps to say, you know, I'm sure there's a job for us over here, and. Uh, Yes, they did. So they were used uh, they were redeployed to was it, was it one marine amphibious? Oh, I'm not sure. On the top of my head. Um, yeah, so they were used for the Inchon invasion and then all, all the battles afterwards and then they were you then sort of got involved with the Chosin Reservoir and it was uh, Task Force Drysdale that tried to push through to break through to the uh, the actual U.S. Marines. Lots of heavy casualties. They did actually get a presidential citation for it, but um, I think they didn't get it straight away because there was um, usual interference by the British Admiralty and uh, I think they got it eventually but I think it was I think it was uh, I seem to recall it became very political and eventually they got it afterwards or well, some informal acknowledgement Right, um, okay, so I think what I might do is just check some old grass and um, bushes on these ones, just do a random one so there's a, it's not all just, just trying to make it a little bit lighter. I think these ones are from Army Painter. Again, I had, um, last time I went to a uh, war game show, I think it was in Bournemouth. There was um, there was a trader down there selling lots and lots of scenery and uh, some of these boxes. In fact, there it is. Warpainter.net. 
War Painter Scenix. Yeah, so that's who the uh, that's who uh, these boxes come from. They've got a, a random selection. And there's also some what I would call um, ones that look like uh, English Garden one here. It's uh, where you, it looks like it's maybe it seems to be waffling on it. You just find it. So that, yeah, so it looks like flowers. There is an adhesive on the bottom of these, but uh, I like a little dob of uh, super glue just to uh, make it a bit more permanent. Bugger. Okay, that one's uh, super glued before I want itself before I wanted it. Ah, oh, it'll do. Yeah, it will do. Right, so once I've done this, the aim is um, I want to get back into bulk action gaming. I must admit I haven't uh, had a game for a long, long, long time, so a little bit rusty. And also that uh, down in uh, Cardiff, very, very soon, uh, they're going to have a, um, a Korea, uh, bulk action Korea competition. So that's something I want to... Um, that's something I want to have a go at. As I said, it's um, a little bit rusty, so uh, if I, uh, I, right, let's refill the old PVA glue. This stuff is not bad. So it's not brilliant, but it came for it, it. It was cheap. I think it got it from the um, works, which is a local. Uh, they used to have a good range of um, books for sale, and, and uh, I haven't seen any, seen any um, military books in there for a long time. I used to get the Haynes manuals, and they used to have in there, you know, sort of everything you wanted to know about the Chieftain tank or the ME 109 or something like that. In fact, I actually haven't seen any good. Oh dear, I think this is going to go over someone's trousers. Yeah. Let's see if I can wipe that off. Hmm. Okay, do you also surplus on that? What I might have to do is tap these afterwards just to um, get any other surplus that's on there off. I'm sure that. Uh, when these, this PVA glue dries, it's not going to stick everything down permanently. I think we're going to end up losing a few bits of the old scenic stuff. Normally, I would have a, a, an audio book on or something like that, but uh, whilst I'm recording, if uh, YouTube or whoever picks up the organ, there's either something on in the back you can get a background, whether it's music or audio book, you can get a copyright strike. Well, I'm going to finish this off soon and then by tweet, I think. Or brew. The other things I've got to base um, are my chindits, but I'm not using them as chindits. I'm using them as um, uh, my Auss uh, my Aussies for uh, Korea. Strangely enough.
And also as well, I've got a couple of the uh, Chinda characters that um, I've taken all the Japanese samurai swords off them, and um, and they're going to be used for my uh, Scottish regiments in Korea. Well, one thing I've been collecting is the um, Thomas Shanters that come with the bolt action sets. Because well, what what I will be doing as well is that. Um, with the para body, I will be green stuffing, green stuffing a sort of um, a hood, and removing all the studs from the actual parachute f um, flap at the back, and because. It actually starts to look like the 1950 to 1950s pattern British Army camo jacket. It gives you a bit good start. Ah, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. What else have I been doing? Uh, well, my son, um, Aaron, he's um, bought himself a Titan. Not one of these little dinky ones, one of these big things from uh, Games Workshop. Or, and uh, he's been building that. And uh, he allowed me to uh, film it when uh, he opened the box and everything else. So I'll share that with you. So I'll show you um, again. It's one of those things that if you want something, uh, something that much, that much, I think it was about twelve hundred pounds, one thousand two hundred pounds. That was a lot of money, but that's one of his dreams that he wanted, and one of the things that he's been saving up for for a very very long time. And I think was uh, he got to the point where he, he can afford it. The savings and uh, a few uh, ah, load and then I just wipe off the surplus. So I'll be putting a, an, an opening video on that shortly, uh, but in, in the interim he's actually been making it, so I've got a couple of pictures of uh, him putting together. So uh, I don't work, um, I worked with resin before, but not in the big stuff that he has, so I know that he's pinned it, so it's solid as well, and also it's, um, I think he did say that um, he's had some resin stuff off before. Forge built and it's been a bit atrocious, and this one is uh, hasn't been that bad to be honest. So, um, which is good. I'm gonna put another uh, this one's be a bit big. This one, put it out the back. I also um, picked up some this stuff as well, AK puddles. So it's if I was making diorama, I could uh, use use it to make was it uh, standing dirty water or di on dioramas or okay. So uh, I might give that a try at some point.
this is very relaxing noticed as well I've been away that uh, the, the big news about the return of the lion and uh, the dark angels so it's uh, in my last video I dug out my dark angels from the, uh, from the attic Sworn that I had more painted than I had, but um, that's by the by. Right, I'll tap things over later on because I think there's, there's a lot on here that's not going to stick down. Well, well, they look a lot better now, they're all sort of um, all the same. Uh, still not 100% whether this basing material is a bit OTT, but. Um, It'll do. It'll do. Yeah, so all these marines here, British marines, they're all using the American airborne figures and the web weapons as well. So all I've done, um, I have put a, a video on how to do it, how to convert them. And to be honest, you can actually use them for other nationalities as well because they seem to realize that um, sometimes battle dress or turning up to uh, turning up to Korea dressed in your jungles or your stuff that would be ideal for the desert is not good when the weather changes so a lot of the nationalities that turned up for Korea borrowed off the Americans so it was um Well, I say borrowed, I mean that they were either issued it or um, as, as the forces ebbed and flowed through Korea through the various different stages, um, had opportunities to, uh, I wouldn't call it loot, but uh, re redispute um, stores and uniforms that were uh, had been left or were going to be destroyed. Um, some of the interesting books I have read that um, um, some of the British units didn't have um, like well they wanted um, the point three oh Browning and couldn't get it through British sources so um, armed with a couple of uh, bottles of whiskey uh, they headed off to the local uh, US supply depot and uh, well, no, no, walked away I think it was one one per company for an infantry regiment or an infantry battalion oh, let's do it again there is light at the end of the tunnel um, what I'll do is the other ones I'll just um, figures to do. I'll just spray those up and then I can do those either later on today or another time. But I'll be glad to get these ones done and then I can move on to the next project. Or projects. Unfortunately, I am a very, very slow painter. Um, in fact, these ones have been going on for some time and I think I actually repainted them once already because I didn't like the way that um, I think I had used too much Agrath fur shade and, uh, and didn't come out very, very well. Well, yeah, these, are, these look okay. These look okay. So 
So nearly at the final push. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's lucky. Yeah, the um, all my figures are actually on two pence pieces. So this is something that I've done over the years uh, when I lived in Germany. On that for about 14 years. I think it was my 20 mil stuff or had all Fennigs and stuff like that on the base. And these ones, uh, yeah, there she is, the Queen. I'm sure I'm breaking some law somewhere that you're not meant to sort of disfigure money or like that, but. Um, Makes the perfect base, round base for um, whatever you wanted to, to do, especially with 28 mil. It's going down. Right, last three. Now, yeah, put a bush on one of them. Maybe. I have got some accelerator that I could have used, but um, I don't, as I said, it's um, like I said, I don't like super gluing my fingers together. And if you've got an accelerant, it actually makes the super glue finish dry very quickly and it produces heat from the chemical reaction. And if you've got it on your finger and you've got a cut on it, oh my god, that bloody hurts. I do want to set up some of the um, on my channel where I can actually just go in the login and uh, uh, talk for 20 odd minutes or so. That's the plan anyway, is that I, I need to organise my time more wisely. Uh, and that's probably why stuff doesn't get painted as quickly as it does because um, is that I need to put at least 20 minutes aside to do some painting in the evening and so that takes the big chunk out of it but also the fact that uh, probably like you my uh, plastic crack mountain uh, you know I always promise myself I'll um, I'll finish off another one finish off one project before moving on to another it's like my career one so sort of, uh, I was sidetracked by uh, French Indochina, and uh, again with this Kickstarter, sidetracked by uh, Vietnam as well, or Vietnam too. <laughs> the whole thing in the French Indochina was actually quite quite interesting. So uh, you know, it's the uh, 
British troops rearming the Japanese to fight the Viet Minh right from the very start. French colonial troops not uh, winning the hearts and minds of uh, the local uh, defender from the nationalities in, in the Indochina. Right, so finally that is then all based up and uh, ready to go. So it's, we'll see what they are like. Um, I'm only wondering whether to put a, a quick splash of sealant over the top of them to um, seal in this, the basing material. Um, I might, might actually just leave it. Um, I've had um, failures before where I've done it and it's just it hardened it into a solid mess and it didn't look, didn't look right. Um, Oh, so this is the basic material I used. It's called Field Scatter. Uh, you can get it off the uh, internet, and unfortunately, I can't remember the name of the company I've got it from. Uh, and then some of the uh, well, the trees. If it's not Army Painter, it's from War Painters. War Painters Scenics. Uh, sometimes they're on shows, or sometimes you can uh, get those. I think they've got a website. But um, there we are. So um, thanks for joining me. Whilst I've uh, rabbit it on and uh, finished off the basin. So that is all my Royal Marines for 4-1 Commando uh, for Korea finished, figures wise. Just need to do the vehicle now and then uh, that'll be done. Um, so brilliant, I chuffed with that. So it's taken a long time. Um, a lot of conversions, a lot of reading up on bits and bobs. Uh, and uh, yeah, so um, hopefully they'll be coming to a battlefield really, really soon, and then I can get uh, a battle report done on them. Right, so um, you take care. I'll catch you very, very soon. Uh, thanks for joining me, and uh, listen to me wrap it on. Well, bye for now.